Welcome back to the channel ladies and gentlemen. Today I'm just going to go through and show you some pretty good examples of how to tell apart solids versus doublets versus triplets on opals. Um, I've already done videos on doublets and triplets themselves so refer to those videos for more detailed guide. This is more just telling them apart and really having a solid understanding of what to look for so you don't get hit by any snags later down the line because I've seen it happen too many times and lots of people have been asking about this in the last couple of weeks. So I really just want to quickly address it, so let's get straight into it. So just briefly, we'll go over some quick diagrams. A solid opal, it's just one piece of opal. There's no lines, there's no interfaces, it's all, it's all fine. There's no clear, distinguished layers. If you move into a doublet, you're going to have the opal on top and then a backing underneath. Typically the opal will be fairly crystal. So the backing can affect the face and basically make it pop more. So it's typically a fairly dark backing, but in between these two, there's going to be a layer of blackened glue. In the case of triplets, there'll be a clear cap, a tiny opal layer. Now this opal layer can be incredibly thin, and I'll show an example of where you can barely even see the opal layer. And then, similar to the doublet, a backing. But the clear cap is the easiest way to tell, though we'll get into some reasons why that can be difficult at times. So now let's just jump into some actual real world examples. So starting off with this, this is as basic a solid opal as you can get. The face of it looks pretty nice, nothing too unusual about it, just looks like a nice opal. And if you look in from the side, you can see that there's a little bit of opal color there. So there's no clear line. You can see that there's a little bit of potch there that comes right up into the color bar. But all in all, it's just, you know, it's just opal. And if you look on the back side, sometimes you won't have access to the back, but the back side you can see that it's still that same opal. No really unusual parts to it, no interface really, except for that tiny bit of potch in the corner there. And yeah, easy solid opal. Where it can get difficult, and I've seen some people get a bit confused, is with boulder opal. So this is a nice little boulder opal that I carved on the channel a while back. You can see here that it's got an interface, so that there's opal and then the host rock, which in this case, being boulder, is ironstone. So you can see that there is something that looks like opals attached to it, but this is a natural attachment. This is how it comes out of the ground, and you can see it's a very uneven kind of interface between them. Don't get fooled by that, because there are actually doublets where the interface is pretty deceptive, and it's not as smooth and flat a line as possible. And I can show examples of how that's done later on down the track, but just for now, make sure that's not the first thing you jump to, and as soon as you see something uneven, don't automatically not call it a doublet, because it could still be a doublet. People can be pretty tricky, but... In most cases, if it's not a crystal opal on top, then most likely it's it's not going to be made into a doublet. It just has no effect. So yeah, that's another example of a solid. Now we move into doublets, and doublets can be incredibly easy to tell at times. So here's an example. It's a beautiful, beautiful looking stone, beautiful doublet. It's got a fairly flat top on it, but have a look at the backing. So this backing is clearly not something that you find opal in. This is like an obsidian glass. It's a beautiful doublet, and you can see here how crisp and straight that line is. So you've sanded the opal as flat as possible, and the backing as flat as possible to give it the best chance of gluing together. This is really common. You can see that it's a little bit uneven where the glue kind of smears across a little bit, but you can probably polish that off and get it even flatter. But that is a real dead giveaway of a doublet. You've got the opal, it's a crystal opal. Paste it onto something black as can be, and clearly not something that you naturally find hosting opal. Where it can get a bit trickier is what I typically do whenever I make doublets. I like the natural kind of look of ironstone as a backing. So just like this boulder here, you've got opal on top, ironstone on the bottom, but in this case it's not been done naturally. So you can see a really dead flat line all the way around. You can even see a little bit of the black glue along the edges. This one is not going to fool many people, but I have seen people passing these off as solids on my online travels so far. 
That's definitely something something to consider. They can use black potch as well, and that can get a little bit deceptive, but most of the time, a doublet's pretty easy to tell. Where it gets difficult is when it's set into something and you start getting the edges covered and all you've got to go on is the front, and the front looks nice. So it's really hard to tell in those cases. So yeah, that takes a little bit more thinking, and a lot of the time you can actually just base it on pricing. So a doublet will typically be less than a quarter of the value of what that stone would be normally. In fact, a lot of the time, I'd be looking at one-tenth of the price. So 10% of a normal opal you can get as a doublet, which makes it actually really nice material for those just wanting something that looks like opal. And technically, it is opal, but looks like opal, looks like a really high-quality opal, but really it's a bit of crystal opal on a darkened backing. So it's, it's really, really cool. Now, the final stone that we want to talk about is the triplet. So have a look at that. This is a clear crystal top, but if you turn it on the right angle, you can see here that the opal actually projects onto the face. This can sometimes trick people. They just show it like something like that angle and say, oh, look at that, solid opal. But even looking at it front on, even if I couldn't see the edges, I could tell this is a triplet and many of you probably can also tell. And that's because of the weird kind of not the pattern, but the magnification of the pattern on the surface. You can see it's doing this projection. It's magnifying the actual opal underneath. I mean, look how big those blocks and everything are. It's clearly not a natural opal just like that. So it might take you a few times of seeing it, but once you've seen it a few times, there's no way you're going to get tricked. Another thing is, and I go through this in my triplet video, if I hold it something like that, you can see the shadow projecting across the face. So even if it's bezel set, you can actually cast the shadow over the opal, and that's a dead giveaway of a triplet as well. But in this case, much like that other doublet, it's got a obsidian kind of, or a some sort of glass kind of backing. So very unnatural for opal to be found like that. And this is my example of how thin a piece of opal can be for this kind of work. Have a look at it. You really can't see it all that well except for here. So when I get that little bit of angle there to get the color bar to flash, that is literally how thick the opal is. It's this tiny sliver. And yeah, it's a dead giveaway of a triplet because not even doublets you wouldn't even do that thin. It becomes too fragile, too brittle. This clear plastic, well, sometimes plastic, but this time glass, this clear lens at the top actually protects that opal from shattering because if this was just a doublet without that top, this thing would break very quickly. And yeah, this is typically, typically just a, you basically make a doublet first, glue this onto your backing with a black glue, and then the lens goes on, of course, with a clear version of that same glue. So just without the pigment, or the die, and you just slap it on and they're together and you get this weird looking semi-opal kind of thing. So it doesn't look synthetic, but it doesn't look natural either. The only benefit of this stuff is that it can make anybody afford opal, because this is like well under 10% of what that opal would be like normally, but you do start losing the effects. I, I personally don't like triplets. This is one of the rare ones that I keep in my collection. But yeah, it's it's not something for me. I'm not a huge fan of triplets. Doublets I can see some value in, but triplets I'm not a huge fan. I'm not an avid buyer of triplets. But I can see how some people would want them. They do look kind of cool, but to me this doesn't really look that much like opal. So hopefully that's all pretty helpful. You can help yourself out by getting some sort of jewelry loop. This one's a two, two part one. So one's a 30 magnification, the other one's a 60, and it's got a little fancy little LED light kind of thing here for each of the windows. But you don't even have to go that fancy. Like I've shown, you can do it basically just by eye. I purposely didn't use a macro lens or anything. I'm just doing it as you would see it, holding it in front of your face kind of at a distance. And I can clearly tell all of these solid, 
solid, doublet, doublet, triplet. And even if they were bezel set, these would be harder to tell, the doublets, but you should still be able to see that this triplet is a triplet. Just the way that the colour color plays on that surface. So you don't even need the side-on shot. But if you don't have anything fancy fancy like this and you do need a bit of a closer look, anything will do really. This is just a... I'm actually not even sure where this came from, but it's just a single single lens. I guess it's a, about a 10 times magnification, I would say. Yeah, probably about a 10 times magnification. And even this is well and truly easy enough to use and you'll be able to see quite clearly a triplet from a doublet from a solid. So yeah, hopefully that's covered covered this topic well enough. And there's a few great write-ups on this kind of thing. And yeah, it's I think once you get the hang of it, once you see it a few times, you'll be fine. Just don't get caught out. And if you're ever un unsure, heaps of you have sent me through listings of opals and stuff before you buy them. I'm happy to look at it. It's not a problem. Solids, doublets, triplets, none of them are a problem. It's just when something like a triplet gets passed off as a solid and you're paying solid prices, that's no good. And I'll help anyone avoid that, if at all possible. So feel free to reach out, and I will see you guys in a future video. So, back to the carving.